What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to each and every one of you. All right, so uh, a bit of news, uh, a bit of news update, I guess you could call it, but mainly about Disney. Yes, we're talking about Disney. Disney has been in the news quite a lot in the last few years, mainly not good news, right? The last time we had some good news from Disney feels like forever ago. Pretty much every single one of their films, every single one of their television series just bombs. It just never really seems to work out anymore. And you have shows like The Acolyte now that cost a hell of a lot of money, and it doesn't seem like it's going to make that money back for Disney. More importantly, it keeps getting worse. Like, if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, if you go on Metacritic, the user scores are just plummeting. Now, yes, official professional reviewers, you know, the media, they keep going, oh, this is the greatest show ever, but that sentiment is not followed through by the audience, and since the reviewers onto the world, Disney kind of needs the world to want to watch this, and the world seems to be turning their back on Disney. But things are actually getting a little worse. And when I say a little worse, I actually... Did I say a little worse? No, no, no. I mean it's getting a lot worse. So we have this uh, brand new report from Bounding Into Comics. Captain America Brave New World reshoots reportedly balloons budget to $375 million. Now, for those of you that don't know, it was actually already finished shooting, and then, once they finished shooting, they started showing it to test audiences. Turns out, test audiences rejected the film en masse. They did not like the new direction of Captain America Brave New World, or the new direction for Marvel, or the new direction for Disney, as it turns out. This meant that they had to go back and basically reshoot everything. They had to cut a bunch of scenes and a bunch of villains from the show, which audiences just did not enjoy, and actually, insiders are now reporting that these reshoots aren't actually just reshoots. It's almost like reshooting the entire film, making a brand new film. Now, I have no problem with the concept behind Captain America Brave New World. I like the actor here. I don't know actor's name, so I just remember he was in some of the other Marvel films, and I liked him. Uh, but he's a pretty good actor. I don't mind it. The problem, of course, is you already know with modern-day Marvel, modern-day Disney, that this movie is probably jam-packed with every piece of political propaganda you can imagine. And as it turns out, Americans have had enough of it. The taste audiences just will not go for it. Now, Disney has been in sort of a race at the, for maybe the last year or so. This is one of the reasons they brought back Bob Iger. They've been in a race to try and fix their finances. Because financially, Disney is still stable. Yes, it's still posting profits, as you would imagine. It's a pretty big company. And one of the biggest attractions for Disney is, of course, its theme parks, which continue to do well because, from what I've heard, Disney theme parks aren't all that bad. The problem, really, that Disney faces is in an overall money situation. Disney ends up spending a lot more money than what they're making, specifically on their cinema side of the business. Pretty much every single thing that Disney is currently touching is turning to ash, which is surprising, because this used to be a company that could do no wrong. Every single film and every single thing this company used to do was magic. People would go stand in line, in queues, just to see a Disney film. It's, uh, it turns out that that was before all the political messaging and all the DEI stuff and all the, well, BS. So Disney is in a bit of a bind. And for those of you that might not entirely be convinced of that, I give you this. This is over the last three years, and this is Disney's shares. You can see it's not doing great. Yes, there was a giant slump towards, you know, last year, and they sort of recovered, but it doesn't seem like they'll ever get back to their previous highs from 2021, which of course was during the COVID era, where everyone was soaring absolutely phenomenally well. The problem is that a lot of other companies didn't drop this far and actually managed to get back to pretty much, you know, before COVID periods. Disney doesn't seem to be the same. And based on every projection that we have, uh, and this article actually goes into it, based on every projection we have, 
there's not a lot on the cards that Disney can really be excited for. Pretty much everything that Disney is currently that Disney currently have in the pipeline has either been completely rejected by Bob Iger and the executive team or just by taste audiences across the board. So the problem is that Disney is in a bind. Now, the reason I'm making this video, of course, is uh, most of you might say, Akalon, thank you so much for reporting on the fact that Walter is indeed wait. Well, you're welcome, first and foremost, but more importantly, the reason I'm actually reporting on this is for those people in the back that think that they're activism and when i say activism i use the term incredibly loosely because really the way we approach activism in this regard is just to not watch the movies to pirate the movies or you know do whatever you want just don't pay them or give them any incentive or any inkling that you are in fact watching it right um the the thing that we have uh, it's pretty easy, right? No one needs to go stand in the street. We don't need to hold up traffic. We can just not watch. And by not watching, we are sending a very clear message. And it's not hard these days because it's not like you're not watching a good film. You're not watching a bad one. So, you know, woo, that's good, actually. Um, but a lot of people were thinking, and I've had this in the comment section on many of my videos, that we can't make a difference. These companies are just too big. They cannot fail. It might take longer for these companies to fail, but I promise you that they can fail. There is no such thing as an infallible company. There is no such thing as, a, you know, an indestructible organization. Disney, just like every other organization in the world, is fallible. It can fail. Not only can it fail, it will fail. Unless it turns things around. And it seems like it's really trying to do that. The problem, of course, is that the issues that Disney faces runs much deeper than just a single film. It's the writers that they get. It's the actors that they get. For example, just on The Acolyte, they proudly, proudly displayed the fact that some of their writers aren't even Star Wars fans. And they said they did that because they wanted more diversity and they wanted to get new, previously not Star Wars fans to also understand the show. Turns out, that's not the way to do it. So let's quickly go over it. A lot of people will point this out. Well, you should always open uh, the world to newer and better audiences. And you are correct, absolutely. But the trick of doing that correctly is opening your world up to new audiences without alienating the core audience. And the best example I have for this is Elden Ring. If you play Elden Ring as a sort of Souls-like expert, you played every single Souls game, even that one forgotten one that no one even knew existed. You have played all of them. You have the collector's edition for everything. You're going to play Elden Ring and you're going to love it because Elden Ring can be played in the same way that you play Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 3, 2, uh, Bloodborne, something or other. All the games, right? You could play it that way. But for a new player, someone like myself that's never played any Souls like games, there are so many tools that get you, that help you out so that you can get used to this style of game. This is an example of bringing in a new audience in the right way. You're not alienating your current audience and you are also opening it up to modern audiences. The issue, of course, is that most of these companies don't think that way, and the reason they don't think that way isn't because it's a slight oversight, just to be very clear. They're not accidentally missing the mark here. They're doing this on purpose. Why? Listen to what they say. Kathleen Kennedy famously stated that she doesn't want white men to watch her films. She doesn't care if white men watch her films. Because to her mind, and you need to understand the racism of this, to her mind, white men are the only fans of Star Wars. There are no other fans for Star Wars than white men. And she doesn't want the white men. Now, we know that isn't true. There are tons of people of color that loved the first six uh, Star Wars films. There's tons of girls who loved the first six Star Wars films. The fact of the matter is, in Disney's mind, 
They don't want those audiences. They don't even want to respect that audience. What they want is a brand new audience, a modern audience. Of course, the modern audience doesn't exist because the modern, modern audience consists of a bunch of professional activists that cry on Twitter about every single thing and have all the pronouns in their fucking bios. So, they don't go watch movies, they're too busy thinking up new pronouns. Uh, it's ridiculous, but that is where we are currently. The fact is that Disney is in a mess, and Disney is going to continue to be in a mess. In fact, some of the insiders are now suggesting that this movie may never even come out. Not because Disney doesn't want the movie to come out, the problem is that they don't seem to fi know how to make this movie work for modern audiences. And as I said, an, uh, an insider literally, quote, said, it's like they're shooting a brand new movie. And the budget is absolutely ballooning. In fact, they kind of think, <laughs> they think that the budget for this movie could end, uh, uh, end up being around 700 to $750 million for this movie. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, movies cost a lot of money to make, but 700 to 750 million dollars is not the amount of money that movies cost to make. That is ridiculous. At that point, you may as well just cancel the film because your film would have to make an obscene amount of money just to be able to break even. And when I say break even, I don't mean it just needs to make back the $750 million. It has to make way more than that in order to break even, because remember, in any creative space, you're not just making money on a film for that film's expenses, you're also making money for all of the other failed film's expenses, because most creative studios have many, many failed projects before they have an actual good project that goes to market, although these days Disney seems to be more of a 100% goes to market kind of company, no matter how shit it may or may not be. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact of the matter is that we are winning, and this war, while nowhere near over, is definitely swinging in our favor. We just need to keep going. You now have CEOs on uh, in uh, uh, Silicon Valley by the way, and I'll quickly show you guys this because it is ridiculously interesting. But you have CEOs in Silicon Valley now just actively, actively rejecting this nonsense. So here you go, right? Um, Lulu Cheng, previously at Activision, now started her own firm. Uh, she writes about this stuff all the time. TechCrunch is going after Alexander Wang, um, Scale AI's CEO. The basics it has decided that diversity, equity, and inclusion are passe and replace them with his shiny new acronym MEI, Merit, Excellence, and Intelligence. And uh, the guys at TechCrunch, of course, said, I cringe so hard, I'm going to need a chiropractor. The media is up in arms about this because to them, this is disgusting. To them, this is problematic. Why is it problematic? Because they don't know how to control it. They don't know what to do with this type of, in with this type of messaging. They thought that they were winning. They thought that all they had to keep doing was praise the companies that push DEI and shoot everyone else down. The issue is that now that Silicon Valley is starting to face the financial realities of a world where you know money isn't just available everywhere, these companies are quickly starting to realize that while it's a fun idea to sit around a dinner table and talk about, in the real world, you need people that can actually do the job. And you need people that are phenomenal at that job in order to compete in the real world. And now all of the facades are starting to disappear. I'll be keeping an eye on Scale AI and Mr. Alexander Wang's uh, company because I think that could be very interesting. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this entire mess. I'll be watching and reading. I wanted to say something else, but I couldn't think of the word. I know there is a word that makes me sound incredibly intelligent on that, but I, I can't remember what it is. Hit the like button if you like, dislike if you didn't, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Peace.